coming? Um, yeah, so, you know, let's begin here. We have a short time together. This is going to be a brief overview of the work we've done on Internet in a Box. So, myself, Suyash, Tim Moody, unfortunately, couldn't make it here with us today. So, to start with, I'm just going to show a quick video here of, let's see if the sound works. You might not be lucky enough. Do we have a, uh, oh, I think I, no, is that going to be the, I guess I should have tested this beforehand. Ah. Um, do you have, do you have a sound cable? Ah, okay. Perfect. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute, but the unmute is under the slides. There we go. A learning hotspot. It could be used on the beaches of Haiti, to the remote woods of northern Canada, to the Saharan desert in the central of Africa. It could also be used on a rocket ship headed to Saturn. This tiny affordable server brings the internet's crown jewels of open source free education and knowledge, including Wikipedia, thousands of Khan Academy videos, zoomable open street maps, electronic books, WordPress journaling, toys from trash electronics projects, and a whole lot more. Internet in a box is being used around the world. You could build this offline digital library for your school, your medical clinic, your prison, your region, or your very own family. Accessible with any nearby smartphone, tablet, or laptop. We are very proud to be working side by side with schools, clinics, and libraries around the world. This free and powerful software can be easily installed on all types of hardware, from desktop computers to laptops, even a $35 Raspberry Pi. You don't need big, expensive equipment to run this lightweight software. Internet in a Box is a community-driven, open-source project that greatly welcomes contributions from educators, librarians, IT workers, developers, and anyone else that wants to contribute to the project. To get answers to many questions, please go to faq.iiab.io. Also, check us out on GitHub at github.com forward slash iiab. Perfect. So, you know, first question is, what is Internet in a Box? Um, it's a very simple device. It's basically, you know, what, what we're shipping as Wiki Project Med Foundation is we're shipping what you see in the picture there. I have one up here up front um, for those who wants to see uh, um, an internet in a box. And what we're shipping is we're basically shipping uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero W. It comes in a 3D printed plastic box held together by four screws. These boxes were donated by um, um, one of our volunteers within our movement. We put a 128 gigabyte SD card in this device, which is enough to hold all of English Wikipedia. So what you basically end up with, um, and, and as mentioned in that video, there, there's lots of content options from Khan Academy to um, um, other educational resources, including Wikipedia, including MDWiki. Um, and, you know, this is what we're shipping around the world. Um, you know, we manufacture these devices in Canada. Um, they weigh about 35 grams. We've shipped them to a whole bunch of countries. Um, so currently we ship the devices at the cost of manufacturing. Uh, so we're shipping them to, for 50 US dollars to high income countries. And then we ship them uh, for about 40 US dollars. We ship them for 40 US dollars for low, uh, low and middle income countries. And that includes the cost of shipping. So when we ship to high income countries, we make about $5 on the cost. When we ship to low income countries and middle income countries, we lose about $5 per cost. Um, and you know, we charge the high income, income countries a little bit more to make it less expensive for the low and middle income countries. 
With respect to the number shipped, you know, we began manufacturing and, and, and shipping these um, uh, from Wiki Project Med Foundation. We began in 2017, so we've been doing this now for the last five years. Here's sort of the number of devices we've been shipping over the years, from 60 up to 80, dropped down a little bit during 2020, 2021, and now we have seen a recent increase in 2022 um, uh, to about 50 devices. With respect to where we have shipped them, We've shipped them around the world, um, um, you know, including Pakistan, Israel, Palestine, um, many places in the South Pacific, uh, a number of countries in Africa, including um, the DRC, Botswana, Mali. Um, the only places we have had trouble with devices arriving is Mexico. For some reason, the Mex Mexico Postal Service just eats up the internet's in a box and they never arrive at the final destination. But, you know, we've had, we've shipped devices to Kinshasa and they've reached that destination. Sometimes it takes, you know, shipping doesn't take one, two weeks like with Amazon. We're looking at shipping times closer to, you know, one to three months. With respect to the breakdown of costs of this device, um, you know, the 128 gigabyte USD card costs about 20 USD. Uh, one of the issues with these devices, if you're gonna make your own, is that there's lots of fake US, um, um, uh, uh, USD cards out there, and you need to make sure that you find um, a, an actual real um, USB card when you're making your device. The Raspberry Pis themselves, the Zero Ws, are about 15 US dollars. Um, uh, if you buy them one at a time, they're less expensive. Um, than if you buy them in quantities. So, you know, usually Raspberry Pi will only sell one of these cards to a person at a time, and they're like 10 to 12 US dollars. If you want to buy more than one, they increase the price to 15 US dollars each. So we're paying that sort of 15 US dollar per Raspberry Pi. And then shipping costs average out to about 10 US um, dollars to ship a package by airmail around the world. There's no tracking involved. It's just not worth paying that extra amount for um, tracking. You know, one of the things we'd love to support is we'd love to support other people within our movement making these devices or assembling these devices and then distributing them locally in your own country or in your own region. Um, and that could potentially cut down with, you know, on some of the shipping costs and, you know, sort of distribute the labor of, of assembling and, and manufacturing these devices. Now, we have, as I mentioned, we have, um, a, a, we have a, um, a internet in a box here. If you guys pull out your phones, and if you turn off your cellular data, you will see something called, uh, you'll see Wi-Fi called Internet in a Box. And if you click on Internet in a Box, you will be able to log on to this miniature computer in my hand. And you will be see, um, you know, the two slices of information there. One is MD Wiki, which is sort of a medical version of, of Wikipedia. And the other one is the whole English language Wikipedia. Um, to log, so, so once you, with some people's phones, Active Portal will pop up and that will bring you to the home page of Internet in a Box. On other phones, you, you need to open your browser and you need to type in HTTP colon front slash front slash box dot land. And we've written that on all the boxes that we distribute just to help people get to that, that starting point. Um, make sure there's no S. Um, uh, the HTT, the S stands for security uh, that requires online access to get an HTTPS site working. So all we've managed to do um, to get around that, we were just using HTTP. It's also pos possible to look at what the site looks like online. Um, so you can, you know, sort of view a version of what's on the box or one version of the box by going to HTTPS, um, uh, the lower link there colon front slash front slash iab.me front slash home and you can see an example of what we're shipping. We will often customize these versions for, for different folks and add specific languages if, if people aren't interested in having boxes with specific languages. Anybody manage to log on? A few folks? Yeah, it's, it's a little slow. Um, you know, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero W. W one of the reasons why we went with this very lightweight uh, um, server is one is, you know, the cost is low. Two is that they're super small and they're easy to ship. And, you know, they come in just a normal envelope. So, you know, the, the, the people at customs don't, won't realize it's something expensive and thus won't go exploring people's mail most of the time, except for Mexico. 
Okay, so that's sort of my overview of uh, how Internet Box has done this last year. I want to invite my colleague Suyash to come speak about uh, some of the, the modifications he's making. Uh, thank you, James. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming here. So, yeah, like uh, uh, James introduced that uh, device very well. And uh, uh, while exploring this device and using in uh, real things, so I realized, we realized that uh, uh, something it is good that the size is very small and sometimes it is challenging because we, if you want to place it in public places, then a size may be a challenge. So uh, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Suyash Devedi. And basically, I'm from India. And um, yeah, I'm uh, currently having a, a, a vice chair as a, a commons photographer user group. And I also serve at uh, FCOM. Uh, so uh, I think this slide is already covered that what is internet in a box. So I am skipping. And uh, first uh, image you can see that is all already there. And uh, second one is a little bigger size with the enclosure where we can put it into the public places. And uh, the third uh, slide is uh, how it looks like uh, to your mobile screen. Uh, the good thing of this device is that you can build your own. It doesn't require much engineering if you uh, are if you have a colleague of uh, some techie colleague, so he, he can uh, guide you how to build this and all the resources related how to build it is available. Uh, so basically, uh, during uh, using this particular devices, I found three uh, problems, uh, not problems, but enhancement, which can improve the performance of device. First thing is that uh, like the each and every other computers, it should have some hardware based sh shutdown because you cannot uh, you know directly plug out and uh, shut it down so uh, first problem was that that uh, we need to uh, you know uh, put some hardware based shutdown system another one was uh, the enclosure because if you want to place it in like i earlier said in the public places like it is really very useful for the uh, places like a uh, hospital where pe people are waiting with their patients and they can they want to explore more about the disease or anything extra so they can utilize that waiting time and third thing uh, like uh, 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 because you know uh, uh, since it is primarily focused to those places where internet is a limit so same places uh, sometimes powers is also a challenge so uh, these are uh, these were the three uh, challenges. So uh, this is solution number one. Uh, there is a very tiny, it's a hardly 20 cent add-on device where uh, you can, you know, put a switch and wait for five seconds. If you keep pressing for five seconds, it will, hardware will get properly shut down. And uh, this is a quick click uh, how this hardware, uh, means this Raspberry Pi, the left one is the Raspberry Pi Zero, which uh, currently we are using this device. And the uh, middle one is Raspberry Pi 4 version, which has more mm, memory and uh, it can cover uh, and speed can get, you can get the uh, more speed. So yeah, this is the quick solution. All you need to put uh, one momentary switch, one LED indicator, this is optional. It will indicate that whether your machine is running and whenever you press this uh, little button, it will flash for few seconds. It will be giving a, a indication that it is going to be shut down and that's it. So uh, a little Python script is written for this and it is also available on GitHub. Uh, 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 okay, I'll, I'll make sure that uh, this uh, slide will be available on common so you can go through that link also. So coming to the next solution, that is uh, enclosure. So enclosure was, uh, you know, as I earlier said that uh, sometimes the little size is uh, challenging and we are very thankful to our colleague who is donating this uh, 3D printed enclosure. 
But here is a very quick uh, acrylic based enclosure, which you can, uh, uh, this design is already uh, available on commons. Uh, so you can uh, simply go to the uh, acrylic 3D cutter uh, center and get these enclosures. Uh, to, uh, like I earlier said that I have uh, shared the, all the links and codes uh, related to that printed circuit board, which helps you to make this device hardware shut down things and uh, along with this design of the acrylic sheets. Uh, third thing was uh, like uh, solar based power supply system. So we are just thinking and we are into the process where we are uh, trying to make this devices powered by the solar energy so that it can run along and you even you can put these devices to the your local village pumps uh, not the wikipedia village pump but the real one where you, you can utilize these devices uh, not only for the education purpose but you can also uh, uh, these devices can also serve to the farmers to know the what type of crops are there and what type of diseases are coming and uh, that its remedy and so and so so even uh, uh, it will be very helpful uh, to as a you know information tool that these types of grants are available for the farmers or these types of you know uh, applications or the farms are available they can simply down it, download and then they then they can use it and that's it uh, so this uh, third one that challenge is under process uh, any questions yeah please uh, thank you both of you for this uh, wonderful presentation so the question is that uh, these devices are uh, for those people who don't have internet availability now, so what if uh, when we talk about villages where there is no internet but if there is no internet, there, there the, the smartphones are also challenged there. So how we are going to tackle this problem? If, if any village had, don't have problem, uh, uh, sorry, don't have internet, there must be no good smartphone. And this work with smartphone, na? so how you are going to tackle this uh, uh, problem? Yeah, you know, um, one, ex one use case of this was um, in Central America, where you know, the medical students would train in um, the large cities where they had access to lots of resources. And then once these students graduated from um, medical school, they were sent out to regions of Central America where there was no internet access. So all of a sudden you have all these newly graduated physicians who have no, no access to the resources that they're used to having. And, you know, they're starting out in their career and they know barely anything. And so, you know, that was a perfect use cases, you know, these students already had, these newly minted doctors already had excellent cell phones, but they just all of a sudden were in a region where there was no access. And, you know, we're starting to see people in many regions where there's not great internet access, and yet they still have smartphones. You know, getting smartphones to everyone, uh, you know, I, uh, that's not going to be a solution that's going to come from us, but there are, you know, lots of efforts specifically in India and other locations where large companies are working to make inexpensive cell phones that can be distributed to as many as possible. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Ruby from Ghana. Um, I'm very much intrigued about the work that you are doing regarding internet because I understand um, from my background how it, this is a very big problem. Um, what I want to understand with the device that you're using I wanted to I want to know how many people can um, use it at the same time and secondly do you program the content on it before you ship it and what happens if the content needs to be updated do they ship it back for an update yeah so that's just basically what I wanted to know perfect um, yeah uh, I'll, I'll take the first part of the question so if you uh, uh, open up this device, so uh, at a time, 32 people can join. And if we, uh, if you use some kind of extender, like Wi-Fi extender, then you can, uh, means more people can log in uh, at the same time. And yeah, second part, uh, yes. Yep, so, you know, with respect to the updating of content. So, you know, we, we um, compile these um, and fill up the SD card before we ship them. 
So it's shipped with English Wikipedia and generally other resources already installed. And, and then with respect to updating, you know, it's difficult to get updates. Um, you know, in the olden days when we used encyclopedias, uh, you know, we, we had less expectations around the, the encyclopedia being updated in the prior months or weeks. You know, we would use the same set of encyclopedias for months, years, you know, even a decade at a time. And, you know, that was seen as being reasonably up to date. Um, you know, with respect to providing updates, you know, I know um, in Papua New Guinea, there is a gentleman who's bought a whole bunch of these devices to distribute around the country. And one of the things he struggles with is the internet in his location simply isn't good enough to download the entire Wikipedia for offline use. So when he wants an update, he just simply emails me. Um, uh, he sends me another SD card or, you know, I grab one of my SD cards. I put new content on it. I mail him a new SD card. Um, and then he just pulls up the old SD card and he plugs in the new SD card and he continues on with the updated version. But how often do you need to update it? You know, probably every couple of years is, is, is more than sufficient. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Dawal. I'm one of the Gujarati in the Queen Keeper Inn. A couple of questions here. One is the stats. Um, the boxes that Suyash said, which, which he is assembling or his team is assembling, are they the same boxes or numbers are the same within what your graph was showing? Or they're out of that number? Uh, because I see your list of countries included India as well. So that's one thing. The other is the stats of usage. Have you ever tried to conduct that kind of survey that how many people logged in, different IPs recorded, etc.? Just as an interesting piece of test. Um. Yep. So, so you know, we did have a, 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 a manufacturer slash assembler of these devices in India. Um, it was called Thingbits, and they they made a bunch and they distributed a bunch from India to India. Um, but they have we're not quite sure why they're no longer doing so. So we're looking for someone else in India interested in taking on that work. These stats do not include um, uh, the numbers distributed by someone other than us at Wiki Project Med Foundation. Um, so that's the first part of the question. What was the second part again? How how widely they are used? Like once you are distributed, that yep. data. Yep. So um, uh, you know ourselves and and Jorge did 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 a, did a study in Nigeria with respect to usage of these devices. They were our previous versions, so we were we were they only had like a, a 32 gigabyte SD card. Um, they didn't contain the full Wikipedia, and we gathered some data around usage from uh, they were put in health clinics in Nigeria. And, you know, there was decent usage, but the only way to actually calculate usage is you need to get the, you need to get the device back yeah. um, right. before you can pull the numbers off, right? Um, and most of the time we're not doing that. We did that for that small trial in Nigeria, but um, that's the only, yeah. And sorry, just one last quick question. Do, they, do the Raspberry Pi that we use, does it support the other languages, other scripts, etc.? When I say scripts, the, the scripts in which we... Right. Uh, other than English or Latin script. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, there there is a massive quantity of content you can pick from to put on the device. You can pick any language of Wikipedia that you want, and you can put it on the device. Thank you. Hey, hi, James. Uh, hi, Suresh Ji. It's a great project. Like it is, it sounds very interesting. So this is. Is this only being used to consume the knowledge by using this particular data in mobile devices, or is there also a plans to also give back the knowledge using this device, using uh, editing and stuff? Yeah. So um, if you log on to the if you log on to the internet in a box that that we have sitting up here, you can actually there's one there's three different modules on there. There's MD Wiki, there's Wikipedia, and there's a blank Media Wiki install. And you can actually open that blank Media Wiki install, and you can start writing on there yourself. Um, and you will, when you hit save, you'll be saving and changing that version of MediaWiki that exists upon that individual box. We don't have a method yet for that material to flow back into Wikipedia. But you know, if you were to you know, take a class, have a class work on that one version um, of an article on that internet in a box, then you could theoretically take it to some place where internet exists and you could re-put that you know, into Wikipedia. Okay, thank you. Complicated and requires some legwork. <laughs> Perfect. Any other questions? Uh, 
um, I saw that was like what fifty dollars or forty dollars, right? But do you have like a paid forward sort of thing or a donation account where you know if I don't need it, but I think maybe someone's needed, I could sort of put something in. Yes, yeah, certainly. So you know this this um, um, the distribution of the device is supported by a five hundred C three. Um, uh, New York-based NGO called Wiki Project Med Foundation. Uh, if you look at Wiki Project Med Foundation, if you go to like mdwiki.org, um, there's a donate button, and you can donate to the charity. That's you know will support the distribution of these devices. But we've also seen many people, you know, um, like some devices have ended up in Cuba, um, and you know people in um, Ireland bought internets in a box. I shipped them to Ireland, and then they put them in their suitcase and they carried them to Cuba. And then, you know, they fired them up in Cuba. Um, so some region of the world, people are, you know, they need to carry them across borders. I imagine the same would be required for like North Korea, um, as, you know, the post is probably well checked there, whether or not someone would, you know, bring in a device and sort of second set it up somewhere, that would be a possibility. So. And yeah, you know, with, with respect to Suyesh's idea, you know, of, you know, we're, we're looking at steps to, to make standalone devices where, you know, you have the battery included, you have a solar panel included, you have a bigger box, um, you know, that can protect the device and sort of having something that's just ready to go out in a place where there is no electricity, where there is no internet access. And sort of, you know, you could put this in the center of a village um, and, you know, this could be sort of your, 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 your town pump where people could access um, um, a library. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. And Ruby, are you up next? Yeah. Excellent. So we have another we have another Kiwix slash Internet in a Box sort of related talk. <laughs>